So today is going to be a little bit of a different video. I say that in every video, but uh, the cross up is back on the bench and we're going to be giving it kind of a little facelift and we're just going to be making it look different. But before that, we're going to talk about merchandise. If you go over to the Teespring store at teespring.com forward slash store forward slash electric apparel, I think that is what it the link is. <laughs> I still haven't gotten this down even after all this time, but whatever. Link's going to be in the description, going to be on screen right now. You can get yourself shirts, hoodies, whatever you want uh, that helps support the channel. So go ahead and take a look at that if you want. And any purchases help. Much appreciated. So I haven't done this in a while. I feel like I should put out some videos. I was going to do this originally at the beginning of January but it is now near the end of February, almost the beginning of March, and I want to get this out because I just want to mod the cross up and give it kind of like a little bit of a facelift, I guess, because one, I don't really care too much for the Sanwa parts, and for the second, the white and black is cool, but because this is all black, I'm thinking we can bling this out a little bit more. So, what are we going to bling this out with? For one, this is the original golden lever that I had. Uh, I still have this laying around. They sent me the other golden lever, which was the revised version, and I decided that I would make use of this by throwing it into a different stick. Didn't know which one I was gonna put it in because this is the original version, so it's not gonna fit in the Panthera Evo, it's not gonna fit in the Daija, and I have the, old, uh, the other golden lever already in the Victrix. So, why not throw it into this one? That's my thought at least. So this is going into the cross up. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to be, this is also from Arcade Stick Indonesia. This is one of the black and gold uh, ball tops. So this one's pretty cool. We're going to throw this in there. And uh, yeah, that's going to go on here. And I think it's going to fit good. If you already have guessed that we're going with a certain aesthetic and that aesthetic is going to be complemented by the buttons. We've got crown SDB202 buttons. And I went all out and we're going with black and gold for this one. So we have got 12 of these buttons. Well, I have 16, but we are gonna be going with different combinations of black and gold on this. So without talking anymore, we're just gonna get right into building this thing. So if I remember right, these are some weird ass things these ones are phillips so we're going to be using the fitbit kit fitbit i keep calling it fitbit the ifixit fitbit kit uh this ifixit kit's pretty good i've been using it for literally every one of my builds and uh stick teardowns and all that for like the last four years yeah three years something like that got this thing a while ago I really, really like it. So we're just going to quickly... I should have done this beforehand, but you know what? We're going to speed build this thing. Because I've got pretty much everything that I need. To do the job. And then this one, I forgot what size it is, but I think... Almost right on the first try. I believe this one will work. Yep. That was what? TR10? I have to remember that. TR10. So let's just get this bottom plate taken off. And we're going to get right to just pulling stuff out. So, first thing we're doing is getting this Sanwa out of here. Gotta switch to a flat head. And of course, if you don't know how to do this, flat head on there, twist. And then that'll come out like that. And we're all good to go. Always remember to get something to put it put your stick above what you're working on just so you're not scratching the hell out of it. 
I have scratched one too many plexis uh, doing that. Unscrew these. I should probably zoom in a bit just so you can see what's going on here. And that one's stuck in a little bit, but you got it. Okay. Oh, nice. Actually, I didn't know they did that, actually. That's smart. Putting a, uh, another dust washer underneath, it keeps this part here from getting all covered in dirt, because this part has grease, and that will actually get very, very dirty. It sucks, but it happens. So, will I just be able to slot this in? It should just go in like that. And that's going to fit just fine. Perfect. So this is going to be relatively easy because I already had this all lined up. And uh, usually it's going to be green is starting for these kinds of connectors. Green up here. Uh, orange. Yeah, that's... Yeah, orange, yellow, and then red. So that's usually how that's going to work. There we go. And then there's going to be this little thing here. Let me zoom in even more. If you see, there's going to be like this little lip on here right up here it's gonna click in with this five pin connector that's how you know to get it right it's gonna snap in like that because if you do it the other way it's not gonna let you you notice it's not gonna let me snap you could force it in but you'll probably break something <laughs> but yeah usually it's gonna snap in like that and that's how you get that connected And then we got to take all the buttons out. I got to figure out what kind of, uh, which ones I want to be what. And you'll, you'll know what I mean in a second. All right. So now we flip this thing over. Zoom out just a tiny bit. And do I want just the gold or do I want to double it up? Let's double it up. <laughs> Black and gold. Pointless, but let's just do it. Then we'll keep it like that for now. I put the cross up sticker on it. This thing came with a cross up sticker. <laughs> A little fun, but let's go ahead and grab the buttons. So, so I'm thinking that the gold plunger with the black rim is going to be the main eight buttons, and then the gold with the black are going to be the uh, for D-pad buttons. We'll see. I'm going to pull all the buttons out first, and then we'll find out which ones I like more. So, we're going to do this the easy way. Or at least I wanted to. Hmm. Sometimes these are the biggest pain in the ass to 
pull out for whatever reason. Jesus. I have to see if these are easy disconnects or not. Mm, they're not, so they're just being difficult. You know, that's the one thing I'm going to have to dock the cross up for is make these easier to come off. Like, there is no reason to have these things stuck like this. No reason whatsoever for them to be so difficult to take out. got the d-pads out oh geez I don't understand why companies want to make it super difficult to pull these things off but they do hopefully you can see what I'm doing there it's kind of like the easy way to get snap outs in uh, get these snap in buttons out That was painful. Feels like you're gonna break these things every time. So, let's go ahead and flip this over. Now this is black with the gold look. Getting that peel off real, real, real easy, real quick. So we got them like that. Or, I'm thinking I might do the black and gold for the main eight, because this is the other one. Yeah, let's do the gold and black for those ones. So I'll grab these three, put them away. We're going to go with these kinds. And these are uh, the Crown SDB-202s, like I said earlier. They're my favorites, at least right now, just because the customization options. But how we're going to do this is I'm gonna stick it like that. And then I'm going to go with T-side in. hope these things actually go in deep enough. It really seems like they don't want to go all the way in, but that might be... It might work. I'll do it that way. We'll just have to see and hope that those things actually actuate, that they actually turn on when you press them, because they're not going in like all the way, not clicking, they're not clicking all the way in. So we'll have to see. You know, this is the worst thing, is that because it's not your standard quick disconnect, you're not going in all the way. If that's one thing that I can say 
to the hitbox guys for the final design is that make these quick uh, quick disconnects easier to uh, plug stuff in because this right now is a little rough. Yeah, I take it back when it was easy to customize. I, I take that very much back because that is the tightest fit I think I've ever had on a quick disconnect. These things are not good. These ones are trash. All right, I did a sanity check just to make sure that these things didn't break on me and they're fine. This one, however, was reversed, so I had to flip it around. But, God, that is stressful. Either way, let's just, uh, let's get these eight buttons put in. So the one thing I'm going to test is do I need to actually force them all the way in like I'm trying to or will they just Do I need to force them all the way in like I did before or are they going to be all right just on their own like that? Okay, I didn't want to have to do this, but because these two broke and I've already gotten this one kind of fixed I have some quick disconnects lying around, some of these smaller things. Let me uh, zoom in. Yeah, so there's these little quick disconnect things. You can get these off of uh, if it wants to focus. You can get these little things off of like Paradise Arcade Shop and uh, getting yourself a pair of wire crimpers and cutters. So, I already got this one working. This one seems to be fine. And what we're going to do is, you know what, I should do that. So, we're just going to take off as much, or as little of the wire as we need to, like that. And then this one is going to be the smallest one, which is 20 gauge. I think that's what it is. And do that. This one will take off the insulation for you. So now we've got enough wire here exposed. And then I'm not entirely good at this. So if my technique sucks, then, uh, you know, don't, don't get mad at me. I, I'm not very good at this. So, how we're gonna do it. I'm not sure exactly how you're supposed to do it, but fold in one of these tabs. like that just to lock the cable in place like that and then Crimp one side down. Crimp the other. And then just kind of tighten it down like that. I think that's good. So, next I'll just fit one of these on here. Hopefully, <laughs> this isn't a complete lost cause. 
because I did test it and it seemed to work all right with the first one. So I did the first one right. Let's see if I can get this one in right. All right, got the little sleeve in. Go ahead and plug this guy in. Okay. And it works. Whole hallelujah. Hallelujah, I managed to fix my mistake. Thank you, minor electric ability, minor electrician abilities. However bad they are and however minor they may be. Because now we can actually get to finishing putting in the buttons. And hopefully I don't break any more because I only have like four more of these left. Now the rest of these should be fine. They don't need that much force to go in. They don't need to go in all the way. A little bit hard to see with all the wires in the way, but I mean, you guys get the general gist of it, right? You've seen me take buttons out and put them in, and especially these kind by now. I would assume so. If you're new to the channel, then there's other videos that show this a lot more clearly. <laughs> if you want to go and check those out. <sighs> Shit. It just looks so wrong, them not going all the way in, you know? weird it's weird and I hate it I'm happy that these aren't broken <laughs> oh man that would have been the biggest pain in my ass to ever have to fix yeah this one I didn't even mess with and it's already got yeah, even, it seems like even the people who put this stuff together had trouble. Because this one I have not touched and this quick disc and this uh, lead right here is fucking bent to shit. So, looks like they had trouble with these two. So if that's anything I can say to the hitbox guys is 
when the full when the full version actually comes out or the second wave of prototypes or whatever you guys are doing uh, when those come out don't use these quick disconnects just use the standard I mean I made them pretty easy well I mean as easy as I could possibly do it <laughs> but yeah that that was a nightmare very much so a nightmare all right let's get these last two this one's gray this one's purple All right, now we get to test it and we're going to see how well, if all these buttons work. All right, yeah, they work. So last thing to do is to uh, get my phone out of the way and to do uh, the last peel. And baby, that looks really damn good. It's gonna look better in the B-roll, but man, does that look good. Anyway, that's it for that. So let's go right to the gameplay, and then we're gonna go to the end of the video after that. So all in all, this was mainly just an appearance boost. Uh, at the end of the day, it's still the same cross-up that I've reviewed back in December. And, uh, you know, it's still okay. It's still good. It's very functional for Mijima's. It's got parts that I like in it now. But it still gives me the same problems. Playing on it uh, for like 30 minutes gave me a hand cramp in my right one. Like I said in the original one, if you guys didn't know, I had surgery on this one back in 2017. And uh, so having to do big stretches like that will cause discomfort in my hands. So still wish it had at least 24 millimeter buttons somewhere, but you know, who knows? Uh, maybe some other people come up with some version of their cross up, but I digress. I think the black and gold, black and gold always works together and it looks great in a, on the stick. I think it looks pretty good. The black and uh, gold ball top from Arcade Stick Indonesia. Then there's the black and gold uh, buttons that I got from Arcade Shock, the Crown SDB-202s. Um, one other thing that I did just because was I actually put black and gold buttons. I didn't have to do it, but I had some black and gold 24 millimeter buttons lying around. So I decided to throw them in there. Uh, I did have quite a few issues uh, when it came to upgrading this thing, which you probably saw, and I should have put in uh, the modding section of this video. And that was, one, this, this thing just had a whole host of problems, by the way. I'll get to those after this. One, these quick disconnects are probably the hardest things I've ever had to pull out of any arcade stick. Uh, most quick disconnects are pretty easy. You just kind of pull them, you know, you grab them by the plastic, you pull it, 
and they'll come out. Or if they're the uh, the secured ones, there's a little tab you would push in and then you release it and it comes out easy. Uh, these ones were very tight fitting. Like I was going at it with needle nose pliers trying to pull them out and they would not come out. And in the process, I ended up breaking two of them on the up button. So on this button down here, and I have, I'm glad that I had these lying around. I had some quick disconnects as well as a wire cutter and crimper. I'm glad I had one of those because I was able to make my own quick disconnect so that this build wasn't completely uh, a mess and totally ruined. And then when it came to putting them back in, like I tried pushing them all the way in. These things do not want to fit properly. Granted, at least you can plug those in just a little bit and you get a good connection. You get a good secure connection and the buttons activate properly. But yeah, the, it was a pain. Uh, outside of the video, I didn't show this, but when I put those 24 millimeter buttons, they're the cheap, like Chinese knockoff ones. Trying to pull those off were even harder. Uh, they actually pulled some of the uh, leads out of the button. <laughs> So three out of four of those buttons are useless. Not that I would use them anyway. I'd toss those. Uh, those those ones are completely useless to me. And uh, yeah, that was one of the biggest problems was trying to actually pull those off of the buttons and put them back in. Another thing, it seems like whoever assembled it also had problems because one of the son was uh, leads was also twisted a bit because of the. Uh, from, I, I'm assuming from trying to put the quick disconnect in. So it's a little weird that uh, they would opt for something like that instead of just your standard quick disconnects that you have on virtually every other stick. I think even the hitbox itself has these kinds of quick disconnects. So going with these really tight fitting ones that will break very easily, don't know why it's there. But that was just the first problem. Uh, second problem was it just decided not to work on my PC. I don't know why. So the footage that you saw was captured off the PS4. I spent all day yesterday, because this is the next day, I spent all day trying to get that thing to work on PS4 te or, uh, PC Tekken, and I tried upgrading the firmware, I tried resetting, I tried doing everything, and I'll, I'll probably go and troubleshoot it a little bit more today, but I just couldn't get the damn thing to work. I tried to... Uh, like either the lever would work or the four in directional input buttons would work. I couldn't get either of them to work at the same time, which is weird because out of the box, I kept it at stock settings. And when I plugged it in the first time to play it for my original review, it played just fine. So I don't know what exactly was going on, but maybe I just have to go and upgrade the firmware and do some more crap again. So. It just didn't really want to fucking work on the PC, so I had to go and capture all that stuff on the PS4. And uh, the PS4 is fucking awful. I hate PS4 Tekken. But that was that was pretty much the only like main problems that I had with it. Uh, yeah, that was that was pretty much it. it. It looks really good. I like how big it is thing is is that I'm not just I'm just not the biggest fan of the big buttons the 30 millimeter buttons for it I feel like either the eight row button should be 24 millimeter or the uh, four directional button should be 24 millimeter or they should all be 24 millimeter uh, I think they should be smaller especially for people with small hands so uh, other than that the stick works great it's a it's the original golden lever that I did a video on back last year in July yeah, and back in June, July. And uh, yeah, I decided to put a that ball top on it and it looks great. Visually, it looks really good. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Uh, if you're seeing this video today, there's still two days left for the giveaway for the uh, snack box. I don't know why I paused like that, but for the snack box that I did, you can check that video up in the card, like right up there. Uh, I am just that giveaway is still going on. There's only a couple of days left on it before I pick a winner and uh, You can get entered to do all that good stuff But other than that that'll be that'll be all in the uh, In the description, but with that being said 
like the video if you did, dislike it if you didn't, get subscribed, hit the bell notification, make sure you turn everything on so you can see stuff like this when it comes out. I had to take a few weeks off just because of uh, some personal issues, but I should be back to doing videos, hopefully semi-regularly, not one every two weeks or so. So, uh, yeah, you can share this around, comment down what you want to see, all that good stuff. We got some more games coming out. Uh, we got Grand Blue coming out. I've already got the Chinese version, but I will be getting the Steam version, so I'll look forward for that this month. Uh, and, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff. So, you can go check us out on Twitch. You can go check uh, the merch store. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. So, with that being said, thank you for watching the video. I'm Dan, this is Hurtbox TV, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.